We are live. Hi. All right. So <laughs> thank you so much, you guys, for joining us. I have Laura here today. Laura, can you introduce yourself and tell everyone what you do, what you're here for? Yeah, most definitely. I am Laura Ditolo. I am the founder of Clutch Made, the Clutch Made factory here in New York City. We offer um, all kinds of design services, sourcing, sample making, and production. Everything's made in the USA. We work with you to develop your product, to make it, to source your materials, and then to cost out production. Perfect. And what type of, like, I love what you do because you work with a product that nobody else wants to work with. Exactly. Like a specialty product where, like, factories will see what you're doing and they're like, nope. Yes. You take on those products. We do. <laughs> do you like me promoting that? Yes. Or that? <laughs> I love that you were going to say that. We do We do things that are like out of the box uh, for what you think is a product. So sometimes we have people come to us with things that maybe are for golfing, that wouldn't be your typical wallet, or some kind of carry-all or belt design that's not typical for what you would make um, in a handbag factory, but we do those anyway. So, we really cover all accessories, even if it's out of the box. Great, great. I love that because yeah. there's always that product and you should speak up. Can everyone hear us okay? I believe so. If you can't hear us, let us know. Um, but yeah, there's always that product that I come across that I'm like, oh my gosh, nobody's going to want to sew this up. Yes. And having a factory to go to that will take that on. And kind of, because what you have to do is you have to work together to develop. That's exactly. the thing. And a lot of factories don't want to develop with you. They want you to be, you know, super clear at the beginning. Cut and sew. Yeah, so the most important thing really is what we found is having the right um, sample makers to work with us so they understand that it's not like a first time out. Yeah. That you have to kind of rework it and rework it and work on this. So we take the time because our specialty is really developing, which is difficult to find, especially in the USA, anyone in any factory that's really going to spend the time with you right. to take you through the steps to make it better and better. So if they have a product that's not a t-shirt, it's something new, say it's like a posture thing or it's something that's not on the market, how many prototypes do you tell them to expect? I know that's a hard question. Right. But Well, usually because we have such a system about doing things, um, we offer like a design consultation at the beginning to get people's ideas okay. out from their head and down onto paper so we can really see what their ideas look like and they can convey them and communicate them better with us. So from there to the tech pack, to sourcing to the sample, usually the tech pack looks like the sample and we can get you there. Just Great. because we really fine tune the communication. Do you make the tech packs? We do the tech packs. Awesome. Yeah, so you're working with the same team throughout the process, which actually makes it better because once you we identify it. and work with you, then we're with you and we understand where you're trying to get. Very cool. Yeah. So we have some questions we've prepared for you. Uh, so here at Vimora, what we're going to do is we're going to just hold this as an interview so you guys can get to know some of the vendors that we work with uh, domestically here in New York. Uh, Laura is our first interview, so we're really excited. So we have a question about, okay, so what is the major differences between soft goods and working with leather or PVC right. or vegan leather, which is just plastic, right? Yeah, PVC is a polyurethane, so it's like a you know, byproduct of oil, petroleum. But exactly. vegan leather sounds better. Vegan leather sounds better, <laughs> but please know, because I always tell my clients this, that it's really not that pure and vegan. It is an oil, petroleum byproduct. Actually, leather will biodegrade better than a vegan. So huh. not just so you know, because it is an animal skin. So would you say that between the vegan leather and the real leather, leather is actually more sustainable? It is more sustainable. And environmentally. Yes. But you're killing an animal. So it's like... Yes, but sometimes, most <laughs> of the time, actually, the leather is a byproduct of the usage of the animal throughout the process. So it's not always an animal's killed just for the leather. The leather is used along with the meat and everything else in the in the whole chain, in the food chain. Got it. Makes sense. Yes. Very yeah. cool. So it's kind of like choosing what you stand for. Um, but yeah, leather, vegan leather is pretty harsh on the environment from my it, knowledge. You know, it really is. And they're <laughs> trying to make it more eco-friendly, but they are actually on the flip side with leather. 
they are working on different um, chemicals that are more natural and eco-friendly to tan the leather with. So actually the leather is getting better and better and more eco-friendly at the same time. Got it. Good yes. to know. Yes. Perfect. So what are the, the biggest differences between working with, say, a leather or a vegan leather and then a soft food? Like okay. what equipment should they be looking for? Yeah, definitely. So when you go to like a sew shop, like a sew up, they usually have sewing machines. They don't have the tooling that's necessary to work with those heavier hides and materials. It's also they don't have the machinery to work with things that are more 3D, like a product. Got it. So there are different machines like a clicker machine, uh, logoing machines. The machinery is a lot heavier because the product is a lot more 3D and bigger and chunkier usually to deal with. So if they're looking for a factory, say they have a product and they know that it's not a soft good, what are the questions they should be asking the factory to know if they have the equipment to do what they're looking for? Right. Usually it's pretty straightforward when you okay. walk into a factory. They'll tell you right off the bat because no factory that doesn't make handbags wants to make handbags usually. I have you don't read, know. Have you read the attempts <laughs> of so shops trying to make handbags? Sometimes factories, like no matter what you bring to them, they're like, yes, we can do it. And I'm like, you can't do that. I know you can't do that. Like, really? why are you telling me you can do that? Yeah, yeah. So wow. I always tell the designers that they need to be asking, do you have this equipment? Um, or what, they're, what they do sometimes is they'll say they can do it, but they outsource it. Right. So then it's like, okay, well, can I see the machine? Right, and I then see. the okay. factory will be like, oh, it's at my brother's. Yeah. And like, well, well, that? I think also you should look on their website or see any examples of work they've done before. That's a quick check. Yeah. So we keep a nice um, product gallery on our website so you can actually see the products that we make and the quality. And you can usually tell by talking with them if they understand all the details by pointing certain things out. If they're coming back at you with some feedback and suggestions, then you know they're pretty much on it. And Good. usually you can see remnants of like leather in the factory. You can see something happening. You don't have to take a tour of the factory necessarily to get that. Sometimes you can just smell it when you walk through the door. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. So you just want to be sure that if, you, if you're working with a product, that that factory has other products that are similar. Exactly. Um, okay, so do you produce locally, uh, domestically, or is it offshore? We are um, all about Made in USA, which is like, it's going strong right now, and I think it's really coming around, which we are excited about. Um, we do not do anything offshore, so we do not make anything. We don't even have contacts with factories overseas. It's been a real focus for us just to bring it back to our factory in New York City and then to branch out within New York City when we need to, when we have overflow. So we have, um, you know, connections with other factories that partner with us. But we're strictly made in USA. Very cool. And what are, what are your minimums? Oh, wow. We're, this is like the number one question you probably are. Oh, no, we get it all the time. But you yeah. know what? We're awesome for minimums. We work because we love small businesses mm -hmm. and people starting up. It's really, it's interesting and exciting. And you know, a lot of big companies even now, they just want smaller minimums. I think everybody all around, nobody wants to sit on product anymore. Yeah. It's really not where it is. And yeah. things are changing so quickly. But we'll start people at 25 units. Oh, wow. Yeah, right. yeah. And we'll even go lower than that if it's something special. Um, sometimes if it's a softer, um, you know, accessory, we can do less. It just, it depends on what Very it cool. is. Yes. That's great. Low minimums, you guys. Uh, all right. Okay, so tell us about a tech pack. How, when they're doing these specific three-dimensional products, it's a different tech pack than, say, a t-shirt or a mm -hmm. pair of pants. Correct. But you do the tech pack. We do. So okay. we have a team Great. of designers at Clutch Made. Um, as soon as you start working with us, you're able to access these services Great. with us, and we take you through a process. So part of that is our fabulous designers who do tech packs. Um, you get a couple edits on it. It's all done through email so you can see your file. You become one with it. You're in charge of like knowing your measurements and knowing yeah. what's going on. The difference really lies in a garment being like a flat tech pack. So it's always considered a flat. When you start getting into something that's more three-dimensional with gussets, it has pockets, it holds things, then it kind of turns into a little bit of something else. Yeah. But with our tech packs, we always do a view of every side. They're very clear and clean. They're easy to read. So it opens the communication up 
for the client all so the way to the sample maker. basically see it three-dimensional through your sketch before you do the prototype. Pretty much they can see all the angles so Got they it. understand which each panel of the bag is going to be looking like. And then they pretty much always, I, I always say it's like 95 to 98 percent, our clients receive a sample that looks just like their tech bag. Great. Yes. That's great because then it, the development process, it's expensive. <laughs> it is. So if it you're is. able it's to really cheap. Look, and you know, because it takes time. Um, and if you're able to really see it in a tech path, that should save in the amount of times that you have to redo the product. Exactly. So I always say know what you want to make at the beginning because then you'll get, you'll step in quicker and you'll be able to identify what the tech pack is. And then because of the communication that we keep open, people receive what they want to make. Great. And that's the most important thing. We don't accept. You know, we'll accept your sketches on napkins. That's a great way to start. We always get those. Yes. Yeah. But it's best to have a professional document so that you know and we know and we're communicating on the same page. So important. Great. Yeah. And then we have, depending on the product, how would you recommend specific types of leather or other fabric? Okay. How should they know when they're, you help them with the sourcing, right? We do, yes. Like, basically, if something's supposed to hold a structure, there has to be a thicker leather. Not necessarily. Oh, okay. But there are certain fabrics that we recommend for certain types of bags, and we definitely lead our clients to the ones that will work best, because every material sews up differently, Okay. as I'm sure you've seen, too. Yes. Yeah. We use a lot of fillers, which is the magic that goes on in between your yeah, layers, yeah. like okay. interfacing for clothing, yeah. right? But we use thicker and heavier ones that give a bag or a product more shape. Got so it. we can really work with that, make it kind of soft, make it semi-stiff, make it super structured. So there's different degrees of that. But definitely your materials, we lead you on the leather path of what we think will wear better and will last longer for what you're doing. Great, so you'll help with the tech packs, you'll help with the sourcing, the manufacturing, the development. Exactly. Amazing. Yes. yes. Great. One-stop shop. Perfect. And then if someone wanted to work with you, what should they have prepared? What do you need to know from them? Can they just say, I want to do a bag and I don't know anything else? Or what, what should they know before they come to you? Well, you know, we do open the door to consultations, so we do have design consultations, which we love doing. So if you're like, I have an idea and I don't know where to go from now, uh, from here, then we can sign you up for a consult with us and we can talk to you and pretty much give you tools to start um, getting all those ideas together. If you already have your ideas, right? What about, I'm sorry, so is that, do you do like a little intro, unpaid? Like free, we, like a strategy, or we like, do we do like a um, sign up call, so you get fifteen minutes for a call, so we can kind of Perfect. hear what's going through your mind, so you can be like, I don't know what I should do or where right. I should go. So we do give that. We offer that on the website. Then we offer the consultation. I think if you feel like you really know your product already and you've yeah. been through all that, it's really important to be able to explain it though, and really know what you want out of it, so you can explain that to whoever's going to make your product for you. Very cool. So how do they contact you once again? And we're going to plug this. It's going to be on our Instagram, and it's going to be on their Instagram. It's going to be on my personal Instagram, be more or you send a mailer. So hopefully everyone gets a chance to see this. Uh, but where can they contact you? They can contact us right through clutchmade.com. We have a special bookings and inquiry section. Easy to get on there. Um, just. Uh, either send us a little note, or you can sign up for the uh, for the console for any time. Our calendar is open. We make the whole uh, accessibility easy. Great, yes. and you can also, if you just reach out to me, I can connect you guys. But we're gonna take a Q and A. If anyone has any questions, we are running this on three different platforms, so that's why we're looking all over. So if anyone <laughs> has any questions, um, let's see. What's the name of the company? We are clutchmade.com, the Clutch Made Factory. But you can find us clutchmade.com. Oh, we've got some compliments. You're awesome. The whole team is a breeze to work with. Um, small minimums. Yes, she does small minimums. I'm a designer making handbags. I'm trained in Italy, did an internship in New York, and under the 
mentorship of former instructor from the fashion. Great, nice to meet you. If you're looking to work with Laura, then you can reach out. Um, all right, I think that's it. Let's Just see. To Brian. <laughs> oh, if there's any other, oops. Nope, Catherine, I don't know how to work your phone. All right, I think that might be it. Okay, great. Do you see any Q and A's on there? That's what it looks me like. Okay. Perfect. Well, thank you guys well, so much. We answered all the questions, but if you have any, yeah, right? if you have any questions, Easy. reach out. And thank you all for stepping in and watching our live event. All right. Thank so we you. have three different to end.